All right, ladies and gentlemen, after a little bit longer than foreseen bathroom break, all the players are back in this game. Optimus Tom and Studio joining you once again for game number three of this very exciting IPL face-off match between Orbit Gaming and Troopers Troopers. Bands flying out left and right already, Studio, and none of these seem all too surprising at all. Shen, wow, these are really fast. That was like five seconds. <laughs> so Shen, Zillion, Malphi, Alistar, Darius, Urgot, Characters we've all seen do well, except for Malphite and Alistar. Those are the one. Oh my god, Katarina. Oh, they let them pick Katarina. Oh no, they took the Urgot away. They put the Katarina in there. First pick Katarina, of course, Judy Monica is uh, Judy Monica is going to be playing a very nasty Katarina. I believe with 722 ranked games and a positive win percentage for Katarina. Normally unheard of unless your name is Skara. Judy Monica wants that Katarina, has it, and we're going to see how devastating it's going to be and what Orb is going to do to combat it because, of course, Katarina, very susceptible to crowd control, but in the right team composition, she's going to be able to get in there late, land the ultimate, almost like an Akali, but can be knocked out of all her spells. So we we'll have okay. to see how Katarina goes. The Scar breakdown pretty much is that, like, you need the team to set up. She can work against any team, mm -hmm. but you need that perfect setup. You need to be like, all right, Katarina, you got to do your thing. We have these four great champions lined up with you to do your thing. So without that proper setup, Katarina, she cleans up. She's a cleaner. Her passive really amplifies that. And if she doesn't clean up, if she's initiating, for example, like a lot of other APs do, she dies. You see the CC go down. You see... Uh, a Soraka Silent Hitter, a Bloodscrank, by the way, would be a hilarious pick because Bloodscrank destroys uh, Katarina with all of his three CCs. <laughs> but uh, if that happens, like, if you don't have a good setup, she's useless. So I want to see what the setup is. Like, this is, this is like, science right now. Right now, we have the test case of Katarina versus not Katarina. And what will work with Katarina? What will make her fly? I know we're going to have to see, but the Ezreal pick being very strong for Orb Gaming last game, taking that one and high, going back in the jungle with his favorite blind monk out of all the champions in League of Legends with Lee Sin, two very effective champions in the team composition last time. Is Orb going to be trying to do something very similar? They don't have the Shen for the split push pressure or the ultimate. We're going to have to see how they adjust to this one. And a Nautilus and Soraka being picked up. That is very interesting over here from uh, Troopers Troopers. Oh, now we're going to go on into this, Sona. Are we going to see a this Shiver makes 2 sense. to throw me this off? Makes sense. Tarek? Still makes sense. Alright, so... They're taking, oh, whatever. Oh, just, they're taking away... Oh, hey. there's Sona. Oh, hey. there's Soraka. They're taking away almost every single <laughs> crowd control option from Orbit Gaming. So, the Soraka makes sense because it does deny the Infuse, and you can always apply the heal to Katarina or uh, your AD carry, of course. Kennen instantly picked... Uh, if he gets that ultimate off, you cannot see see him to stop it. So, if Katarina does decide to kill Kennen, who's going to be a very good target, there you go. He, she will be CC'd. Now, the Soraka, Tarek, Sona thing, that will, they each have their own uses. Sona, with her ultimate, sets up good kills. Soraka, being chosen, disables that silence. Tarek, his ultimate, because Katarina scales off both attack damage and AP, the 45 AP and AD she would receive from Tarek at level 16 would actually be a tremendous boost to her damage. I'm going to ask what the pick is from Troopers Troopers if I have any of them on their, my friends list. I actually oh, do not know. I, okay. I, I, you know, one of the things I really hate about Evelyn is she's used as a placeholder, and I would love to see her being played oh so much, but that is not going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. We do see a Rumble pickup being picked up once again, and Vladimir is going to be the champion to be put in the top lane against that Rumble. Now, one thing we're going to have to see here is... Is Captain America going to be aggressive enough on Yozuki at the early levels to really try to push Vladimir out of lane? Or is Vladimir going to have the jungle support from Lee Sin to really sustain himself? And it looks like uh, Graves is going to be the range carry pick. No, Judy Monica said me because he didn't understand it. <laughs> so now he has to play Evelyn. Somebody, <laughs> somebody else has to play Katarina, I guess. I don't know, though. Graves did say. Uh, Graves was said by Nick Wu first. Oh. So I think we're going to have to give that to that one. So we're going to have to get the... We're going to have to get everybody back into this game, and we'll be getting underway. But how do you feel? Like I said, Rumble can get aggressive on Vladimir early on, and Vladimir's one weakness really is in his early game. But once Vladimir gets a Hextech Revolver, can try to sustain in that lane, and with a Lee Sin jungle that could potentially have very early ganks on Rumble, how do you feel that matchup is going to go in top lane? Uh, one sec. I'm just getting some information oh. from... Okay, Trooper thought we weren't... Yeah, okay. <laughs> Trooper thought we weren't in the game, and he was giving me information. He started his own game that he wanted us all to join, but I don't think he realized this game was still up. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Vladimir versus Rumble. Rumble annihilates Vladimir. It is completely unfair. I, I don't know if like they're going to stick with that pick. They can switch off their pick because that was last pick, 
and the Evelyn was not selected yet, so maybe they just didn't know what was happening. But Rumble versus Vlad, uh, yeah, Rumble just wrecks Vlad. Every time Rumble presses his buttons and goes towards Vladimir, the Flame Spirit will do way more damage than Vladimir can do early. The Electro Harpoon will keep him in place, and if you use Pool, well, that three second uh, time span to use Electro Harpoon. It, it doesn't end by the time pulls over, so you can always get oh, go ahead and get a second electro harpoon off. So he has a potential to kill Vladimir. He has more damage. He has sustained damage, which is the big thing against Vladimir. You can't let him just get his HP back up. So yeah, Rumble will just blow up Vladimir, and there's very little Vladimir can do about it. Some good jungle support, some good ganks could be enough, but frankly, I mean, Captain America, he is supposed to be the Rumble, and he did play amazingly well last game, if not over-aggressive, but the over-aggression, that's going to work so well against Vlad. Yes, indeed. So we're going to have to see. Like I said, Rumble is a very good pick against Vladimir for those early stages of the game. But if Vladimir can get to his late stages of the game, he's going to be very, very powerful. Interestingly enough to see Yaku Yakuzi picking Vladimir into this Rumble. Going to see how that one goes. Bottom lane matchup, though, we have the Graves and Soraka. A pretty standard composition in the bot lane, considering what we've seen Troopers Troopers run in the bot lane the previous two games. So interestingly enough, we have basically a sustained support and an aggressive Graves that can always get in there with Buckshot. We'll always also have have the advantage of getting those infuses so he once again can buckshot away as much as he wants to and if not he's just very very content to sit back and farm his way up but the one thing they have to be very very careful of is this blitzcrank pick again from orbit and then ezreal being very aggressive as well they pull either of these champions it could be lights out but the one thing graze does have to help against blitzcrank is his quick draw to try to get in and out of sticky situations so i gotta say i love both team compositions because i'd say 90 percent of both team comps have one focus in mind which is Katarina, I love you, or Katarina, I hate you. <laughs> so the, the Nautilus pick, the Rumble pick, and the Graves pick, that's all going to be AoE to supplement Katarina. So it's not hard to see a side of a Nautilus, but there's a lot of just good damage that if Katarina comes in a little late, just a tiny bit late, presses Shampo and gets a decent ult off, she will just clean up Wreck House, which is what you got to do as Cat. At the same time, look at Orbit. They have Cannon, they have Blitzcrank, characters who are incredibly good at interrupting Katarina. A good Lee Sin kick. A good early Lee Sin gank, actually. Lee Sin pretty good against Katarina because uh, if he does land a resonating strike, she cannot shun Poe to avoid it unless uh, she gets really far away, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But the teams are set up both just to kind of screw over Katarina. And the cool thing is, for both teams, if Katarina doesn't do well, it's not like uh, Orbit can't deal with Graves doing well. They can still deal with that. And if Katarina doesn't do well, they still have a really good lineup. They still have Rumble. They still have Graves. So... Both teams are kind of centered around Katarina, but they still have their own defensive. They still have ways to deal with it. And Orbit, I'd say they have a bit more of a traditional AoE composition because mm -hmm. of Blitzcrank, Cannon, Ezreal, Vladimir, oh, yeah. they press R. It hurts, man. <laughs> I was about to point that one out, but you beat me to it, Studio. They have the supplemental yes. AoE composition, of course. Ezreal, we saw his AoE on the ultimate, devastating the teams in close quarters team fights before. Blitzcrank is going to be able to initiate or go in there and use his own ultimate for AoE silence on top of damage. Cannon can then run in there with his AoE and tag all the damage he wants on top of stuns on top of people. Vladimir, of course, is only going to supplement all the extra AoE damage with his Hemo play. And, of course, he has Tides of Blood as well to add a little shoot of extra AoE damage in there. Don't forget, Leeson also has Tempest and Cripple that he can run in there and do some AoE damage with. So lots of damage oh, yeah. on multiple targets from the composition of Orb. Meanwhile, over here, like you said, the same thing for Troopers Troopers. Nautilus deals some decent AoE damage. Katarina is basically all AoE damage. Rumble as well has his ultimate, has the Flame Spitter, has everything he wants to to try to be hitting as many targets as possible. And even Graves has a little bit of AoE damage, not necessarily the same kind of the rest of the champions, and not nearly as much as Ezreal, but he has the Buckshot that can, of course, hit multiple targets as well. So we're going to have to see it's going to be one of those games where if so one person gets caught out of position in a team fight it could be devastating because the other team's aoe could just rip them to shreds but we're gonna have to see here does troopers troopers learn from last game that if you walk by a bush it could contain the entire enemy team just gonna have to see i am scared though i do think katarina when she falls behind is not going to be that effective mm -hmm. just because she just won't have the damage and that's all she really has she can't fall back on cc cassiopeia does have two slows and well a one slow, then either a slow slash stun, I guess. Uh, Katarina, what does she have? Eventually she can get a Rhylize, but that's it. That's a slow. Or maybe a Gunblade. Two slows. Not that effective. So there's a lot of potential for things to go terribly wrong if Katarina does not do well. And Orbit, I don't know how much experience they have against her. Judy Monica is a really good solo queue player. There's a lot of members on Orbit who are really good solo queue players too, like Nubby Pooh Bear, for example. But if they don't, I don't know if they've seen this as a competitive pick, as a competitive play in this environment. So... 
All right, solo queue, Katarina, we know how that goes. It goes pretty much dumb because solo queue is kind of dumb. Mm -hmm. But competitive, Katarina, man, I I I'm hyped for this, man. This is going to be awesome. I'm really excited. I hope the Katarina pick does well. But Orbit Gaming, three of their two champions, three out of oh, three, uh, three <laughs> champions out of the five, not two do not have ways to cancel Katarina's ultimate. The other three have multiple ways to cancel it. So there's going to be a very dangerous composition going in here. Can Katarina go in there and deal all the damage as possible after an initiation from, say, a Rumble or a Nautilus? That is going to be very beneficial to her. But once again, if she goes in there and tries to initiate herself, it could be very devastating. If you lose Katarina, you're losing all the AP damage from this team besides maybe the Rumble, deal as much as he can. So that is a very, very de big deficit if you lose her early on in a team fight. Going to have to see if that happens. And the, like the one thing we mentioned, Vladimir has sustained damage. Vladimir can't exactly burst down Katarina. So even if Katarina is going to eventually fall in the team fights, Vladimir could, you know, that Vladimir pick might not work out for them because the Hema play is going to pop after Katarina deals all the damage in the world. Okay, now this is very important. I, I really have to point this out. If we go ahead and take a quick look at Captain America. Captain America currently, currently playing nude at his mother's house. He's playing Rumble. Now, there are three Rumble skins. Two of them, he's wearing pants. Rumble in the jungle, the dude, he's on vacation. He's in the jungle, no pants. This is Captain America nude playing the no pants Rumble. High tier skin pick right there. That is Synergy. that is high tier synergi synergization. Synergization? <laughs> synergization. I enjoy making up my own word studio. That is high tier synergy coming out from Captain America. Blitzcrank is going to lay a ward over here. Does not want to face check that bush. That'd be absolutely devastating for the team over here. So taking a quick look at the compositions right now. I mean, Orb has Kennen. Uh, they have Blitzcrank, they have the Ezreal, the Vladimir, and the Lee Sin. Meanwhile, on the opposite side, there's a Rumble, a Soraka, a Nautilus, a Katarina, and a Graze. I don't think either one of these teams really wants to get in an engagement at level 1. We do see Orb lining up at the river, the line of scrimmage. They're all kind of set up like John Madden football right here. They're even kind of stirring, just walking back and forth in circles like they're waiting for the ball to be, ha to be uh, hatched. Wow, to be hiked. I'm sorry, I got I got Anivia on the brain apparently ever since you mentioned Froggen because he is one of the best players in the world in my mind. But the seal beat you in the brain. Now look at Snoop A over there. Oh wait, nope. nope Not wait, here. Wait. Oh. <laughs> They, they could catch Orbit going for a Wraith Seal, though Blitzcrank might just grab it through a wall. Don't know if you can do that very effectively. Nope. Oh, they are going to go Ooh. right over here. There's going to be... Oh, he used the pull, didn't he? He used the pull on the Wraith there, so he does not have it in this engagement. They are going to wind up chasing them away. Shaka once again picking up Starcall at level 1. Look to see her getting that max after the heal. It was very, very devastating against Orbit in game 1. Could potentially have the same effect in game number 2. We're just going to have to see right now. So, a failed Wraith Steal. Blitzwing is going to go back after taking a lot of damage. It's fine. High is going to be able to start off over at his blue buff, picking up the wolves first. So no delay from the junglers <laughs> on either side. <laughs> the hell is Mr. Fisher's doing? He, he aggroed uh, golems. I think he thought they were going to do it, but Trooper was on the other side. Doesn't have quick draw yet. So he just took a lot of damage for no reason. And uh, by the way, the Nipu uh, red buffs start a bit unorthodox, but this is something we see pretty often from a lot of uh, Nautiluses in general. So it's not effective for getting him a quick jungle in terms of using his skills but the red buff will really synergize with his passive you deal a lot of damage with that the red buff on creeps it's it's a different and it works because it gives him a really good level three gank yeah, indeed. And we did see Hotshot GG pop utilizing this at MLG Anaheim. He started at the red buff, then went for a blue buff, then went for a sort of a gank here. We see Odd One doing this constantly by going blue buff and then red buff, not using his smite and then going for an early gank. Speaking of early gank, Studio, this is my favorite thing in the world. We could see an early Lee Sin gank. They're going to try to give Vladimir that advantage he needs against the early aggression from Rumble. Is it going to go off? I don't know. Rumble's playing extremely cautiously, hiding behind creeps, using those missiles to last it even and try to harass that on Vladimir. Yuzuki doing a really good job of actually, you know, trying to bait this out, trying to dodge the missiles. Rumble, ooh, here comes the Lee Sin coming in here. Goes over to Vladimir. Pool goes down for the slow. Lands the Tempest. Does not land the Sonic Wave. No resonating strike to follow up, so no kill. But coming from behind, Nubby Pooh Bear, Nautilus. Ooh, the flash with Staggering Blood still goes down. Then the E goes off to slow down. Dredge Line actually went through him on my screen, but pulls him back. Ignite goes down. Katarina dealing a lot of damage. Nautilus taking a lot of damage. No kill going there. Ooh, oh, there goes Lee Sin in there. Oh, there's a, a oh, stun pump and a flash. <laughs> First blood is picked up, but then Lee Sin is going to come back. Is it going to be a double kill? Red buff does get the slow. Dredge line goes off. Red buff, the shield for Titan's Wrath will not be enough. Lee Sin picks up a double kill there in the I mid lane. Land this more extra on Lemonations chasing down Trooper. He has no HP. One more hit. This could be it. And the end's going to be focused on by the creeps. Come on, Mr. Fissures. Kill him, Mr. Fissures. Use a banana. Use those stars to get this kill. You can do it. Oh!
picks up the kill, but is it going to be enough? Lemonation pops the W overdrive in there. There's the pull, and another kill goes down. Now, this is the game we're used to here, Studio. We saw game number one be super aggressive in this way for Troopers Troopers, but Orbit has turned it around now. Now, they have taken the very early aggression lead. Six kills at the 4 minute and 22 second mark. This is the kind of game we expect from Orbit and Troopers Troopers. And there is actually a lot on the line for this game. We haven't mentioned that once this stream. I just realized that. So whoever loses this, they're still going to be in losers round. They're not going to be out of this tournament. They can still attend IPL uh, face off in San Francisco or IPL uh, Disco in the Frisco, depending on who you are and whether you like bad jokes. I like Disco in the Frisco. Uh, That's I, me. I, I like Disco in the Frisco. It's good. It's good. But um, whoever loses that is going to be in losers. And you don't want to be in losers. You want to come in dominant. You want to come in first place. I think they might get a paid trip for a first place uh, spot mm -hmm. too. So. I mean, they want to win this. Both teams have a lot on the line. Hi was actually telling me before this game, he does not want to lose. Like, oh. just outright, I don't want to lose. I could see that, too, because he's still being aggressive on this mid lane. Kennen goes in. Are they going to tag a stun on Katarina? No stun getting tagged yet and missing both skill shots. So Katarina will live from that gank in the mid lane. Back up top, though, we saw them being aggressive on Rumble. Rumble with a little bit of a level advantage on Vladimir currently. Interestingly enough, Rumble started cloth armor and five health potions in this matchup. That is actually kind of odd, but I like it. So it's a different take on Rumble. Normally it's like boots, three potions, a billion percent of the time. But because of Vladimir not being that scary, he can go ahead and just need to deal with a Lee Sin. That's going to be the big thing for him. Lee Sin ganking. You saw him deal with it before. Uh, he did end up surviving that gank, taking a bit of damage, blowing his flash. But like, watch him right now. He's already retreated at base. He's going to lose a bit of CS, but he just wants to play safe. Ooh, I'm playing at the bot lane, though, as we see a pull going on to Soraka, but Graze is dealing a lot of damage to Ezreal. Blitzcrank trying to get in there to disrupt things. Look at the star calls. They're shredding away. That is a level 2 star call, level 1, everything else right now. Soraka does not want that creep talking. He silences the creep accidentally instead of healing Graze or Mana right there. It's a little bit of a skirmish on bot lane, but both sides are going to be A-OK -okay to just continue going back and willing away on the minions. Farm themselves up into a bit of a position here. We see Rumble coming in, laying down a ward over here before he stops off to get back into his lane. Lays one down in his own tri bush as well. So making sure that they are very, very up on the vision. That is one thing Troopers Troopers fell behind on in last game, and it really cost them the game. As soon as they got the or early Oracle's Elixir on Orbit Gaming, they denied them vision. They constantly were in bushes. Constantly, Judy Monica was walking past them and dying. So now that they have the vision in the early stages of the game, they are going to be very well protected against any aggression. But here comes a Blitzcrank pull, but Nautilus is waiting in the wings. Their ward just expired. Does not see him down there. They are going to get a lot of damage off. Ooh, a dredge line goes down on Blitzcrank. Staggering blow as well. No tower die from Troopers Troopers is very uncharacteristic of them at this point, but they are going to be playing smart. it safe. Yes, very smart. Now, th that was kind of odd. That was another miscommunication. Like, Graves and Soraka already backed up when that dredge line did land. So, Troopers Troopers, once again, they're still a new team. Still need to work out little kinks like that. I, I do like that they did not die. They had the potential. Would have probably given up a triple kill for a kill on Blitzcrank, though. Mm -hmm. So, it may have seemed obvious, but with the way uh, Troopers Troopers have been playing, they go for just crazy tower dives. Sometimes to their chagrin. Mm -hmm. But overall, I mean, right now, this is the time for Captain America to do well. This is like their timing, where they need to really start pulling ahead, start getting a really big advantage, because look at Lee Sin, counter drilling, taking things. Nick Wu might actually just die here. Ooh, actually, ooh, getting very, very close there. Not want to contest that red buff with Nubby Pooh Bear coming down on top of this. The one thing is Katarina is just kind of chilling around in this mid lane and farming up. Nubby Pooh Bear is not really falling behind in CS, and that's actually up top looking up here, because Rumble's trying to generate some sort of early advantage. He's behind by 12 CS right now. Constantly playing aggressive on Vladimir to try to push him off. Vladimir's just continually going in, trying to sustain himself off those creature transfusion and taking an early CS lead because of this. Rumble has gone back, picked up Ninja Tabby, like you said, building against Lee Sin, but now Lee Sin just kind of leaving him alone. So Vladimir on the top lane is able to really generate his own advantage from this. Rumble, like you said, playing defensively against Lee Sin. He's pushing against the tower right here. He is trying to catch up in CS currently at 39 to Vladimir's 48. We see a dragon Ooh. going down for Orbit Gaming in the meantime, though. So still generating small advantages in gold, generating CS leads. Blue buff actually going to... Was that blue buff meant for Cannon, but it went to Lee Sin? Uh, it's going to be effective on the other one. Actually, top lane, Captain America just tries to kill Yuzuki. The Ignite is there. He is ticking down. He does survive it through the pool. Does transfusion to survive. Both characters do get out of there. It was a very dangerous tower dive right there. That's the Captain America we know and love. Meanwhile, bot lane, Soraka actually getting very, very low over here. Lemon Nation wanted to go in and try to get another knock up there. Ultimate from Ezreal is not going to find anybody Ooh. right there. No one home in that one. Flash out from W Pooh Bear in the mid lane. Getting the stun down to Katarina. There's the ultimate pop from Kennen. Oh. Katarina is not going to die, though. It looked like there was a missed uh, Sonic Wave from high right there. Could have sealed the deal, and that would have been a dead Katarina, but she is going to get out of there. Barely any HP. That's kind of the story for uh, Troopers Troopers right now. Getting very low, not dying, getting out of there. 
but that's not good. They're, mm. they're surviving, yeah, but, I mean, we gotta say, Orbit's team, they're looking good to go ahead and fight this Katarina. She's she's at 53 CS versus Nubby Pooper's 53, 53 CS, so they're very equal, actually. But there's still a bigger gold lead right now for Orbit. They've taken that dragon. They're winning bot lane. We see them getting chased out time and time again, and as they get chased out, all right, it's not a kill. It's not that ticker going up by one at the top of the screen, but it is an advantage slowly growing. It is the gold lead, actually, that gold ticker going up very slowly in favor of Orbit as these chases keep happening. And Captain America up in the top lane, now here comes Lee Sin. They know he wants to play aggressive. They know they can punish and kill him. Oh, here comes the Sonic Wave Legending Strike landing home. There's the Tempest and the Cripple kick back into the wall right there. Captain America has no flash. This could be a kill right here. High is going to go back in with another Sonic Wave Resonating Strike. Red Buff and Vladimir, all the slow they need, picking up a nice kill on Captain America right there. Captain America, man, I don't know. Maybe his weakness is playing with no pants on or playing in front of his mom with no pants on. So maybe we should put some clothes uh, he on. He was proud of it, man. I think he. I think that might actually make him play better. Uh, uh, we're, we're not judging <laughs> here. We're not judging here at IPL, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. We're just announcing what they tell us to. So. Please. Yeah. But, so the big deal with uh, right now Captain America is because he's not doing very well against Vladimir, Vladimir is going to be more effective in team fights with Hemo Plague. Captain America, he can do some decent damage. We saw that last game, yeah. but the problem he will have is he will die. Rumble is very killable. He's one of the most, I'd say, easy to kill champions in the game, but he has like a process where if you get a good flame spitter off and a good equalizer off, you did enough. Like, you're okay, uh -huh. kiddo. But he will not be able to get that off, most likely, at the rate that the game is going. That goal lead up to about 3,000 now. It's growing very steadily, very slowly, about every two minutes, 1,000 gold. But that that's building up very quickly. Yes, indeed. Ooh, Blitzcrank's going to go in here, pops the overdrive, gets a knock up on the Mr. Fissures right there. Lots of damage coming out from him and Ezreal. Not going to go in there. There's no pull. Now there's a Lee Sin waiting in the wings. Pull goes down on the Graves. Exhaust as well. Trying to get damage on that 9, but oh. Ahai is now in there from the jungle. Picking up two kills, one to Ezreal, one to Lee Sin. This could potentially be a dead tower on the bottom lane as well. Did that, hit, that did not hit Katarina. That did not hit Nautilus. I thought it actually hit both of them in that path too. I was like, that was a really good ultimate. I hit three people at the same time, but... <laughs> No, actually, Katarina's going to come down here and defend this tower from falling down. So Ezreal and Blitzkrank are both going to go back, respectively, with a lot of hefty gold in their pockets. They're going to go back, pick up some items. Ezreal with a phage on top of his Vampiric Scepter already. Taking a look on the side for Grazo. Double Dorans and Berserker's Greaves. Ezreal with a decisive gold advantage in that bottom lane. Two kills really making up the difference compared to Graze's two deaths right there. So lots and lots of gold for Ezreal in that bottom lane. Even taking a look at the gold tab here. 38, or 38, 90, almost 39k compared to Graze with 20. 850 so a thousand gold from this advantage of orbit is all Ezreal right now okay so something really cool i just noticed this look at the items on kennen and vladimir they both have revolvers they will eventually both build will of the ancients why is that going to be so cool they have two characters who deal magic damage uh Ezreal himself does use a lot of abilities mm -hmm. essence flux and his ultimate will benefit from those wotas listen all right he's got some burst but katarina is all clean up so if that front line of people dealing damage, Graves, uh, Rumble, if they're not doing too well, they don't do enough damage, Canary doesn't really work. You factor in the extra Woda, the extra spell vent, it's going to be huge. Extra gank on the top lane, yeah, we do pick have, Tom. We do have a Hemo Plague, and it looks like there's an Equalizer going down, but Lee Sin is coming out of here. Pool will oh. survive. High is going to want it, picking up that kill. That is a 5-0 and zero high compared to the 10-2 and two he was last game, already on the track to success again in this game. Pain's going down by mid lane. They do catch Nautilus walking around over here and Katarina. Nubby Pooper is going to be playing a little bit more passively, but take it away. Once you're talking about that double Woda composition, like you said, Katarina will not be able to clean up if they have too much sustain. And oh my god, Nick Boot walking into Orb Hide. Those bushes, that was a weird bush to be in though. So Nick Boot trying to get out of there. He, he does not have a lot of escapes though. No, as you can see, he does have a dredge line. Is it going to be up right now? A ward goes down to cut off the escape. Dredge line is not up. There goes a depth chart to try to get out of there. Now Katarina's in here popping the ultimate. Vladimir is going to pull through the entire thing, though. Nick Wu getting low. Katarina is without her ultimate. Now Nubby Poo Beer comes in with the ultimate. Tags the stun down onto the Nautilus. Nautilus is going to fall. Judy Monica getting really, really low. Hi, going back in. Gets greedy. Wants the kill and will be shut down by Captain America. Nubby Poo Bear wanted it too, but cannot get it. Judy Monica oh, will die, though. Death. There's an Ignite picking up the kill right there. That was a very risky play. Play by Orbit. They traded two for one, much like the kill on the bottom lane we we're potentially talking about right there. I don't exactly know if that was worth it for Orbit. 
No, that would be the answer. <laughs> Katarina a benefit a little bit more too because of her passive, giving her the extra 50 gold in the end. But, I mean, they're still ahead. Look at this bot lane steal on the red buff. If they can just keep attention away from Ezreal, if oh, <laughs> Nian no. can not miss his mystic <laughs> shot, they're in such a good position. Oh god, No, me. it's still resetting! They're not gonna want to get this one. Now there's aggression from the bot lane. Happened. That's actually costing them Blitzcrank. Elimination is gonna wind up surviving through a heal, though. Nine is gonna be very careful. He does not want to essence shift or uh, arcade shift over the wall. There's a rumble flashing through on the smoke screen. Now Nautilus is coming in here against Lemonation. That reset was the most deadly reset in the world as now they lose both members of the team and actually was that rumble picks up the kill now rumble has a red buff lisa wants to go in and deal damage though yuzuki is here but katarina is also here that ultimate is already going to be up there goes the ultimate trooper is going to pick up a kill over here on the high now yuzuki and nubby poo bear have to get out of their orbit with such a lead now kind of throwing it yuzuki gets extremely low nubby poo bear gets extremely low lots of damage coming out from here that is almost definitely going to be a transition into a dragon Four troopers, troopers. That's what they needed to get back in this game, and Orb just kind of handed it to them on a silver platter. I mean, the gold lead's still going to be in favor of Orbit by a tiny bit, but that missing two mystic shots on the red buff end up being just the biggest thing in the world. Imagine how many times you've kind of like missed a skill shot on a minion, like the on accident. Oops, whatever, it, it happens. But that that might cost them a mid game advantage right now. Look at the gold difference, only 1.7k, they, they secured a blue buff, which isn't that bad for Orbit because they don't have a lot of mana users, mm -mm. but overall, just now Captain America is getting scary again, now they can start playing a little bit more aggressively, now they're not just going to be scared of being instantly murdered. No, it's true. So once again, like I said, Orbit had such a large advantage in this game. It was about a 3 or 4k gold advantage that they just threw down the drain on a series of very bad plays. Gave away a red buff they tried to steal. Gave away in total 4 kills, a dragon, and a blue buff. So that is where all the gold is going to be catching up. And the one thing is, Graves did not get a lot of those kills. He got a lot of assists, but didn't get a lot of kills. So he is still technically down to Ezreal by about seven to 800 gold which is a decent chunk of that advantage that Orbit Gaming does have over the enemy team right now. Graze has one kill on him. Ezreal actually is 2-2-2 two, two, two across the board. Graze 1-2-3. CS advantage is still in favor of Ezreal, so he does have a bit of an item lead. Pickaxe and Phage and Vampiric Scepter being a little bit better than Double Dorans and a Vampiric Scepter on top of those Berserkers Graves studio. Okay, top lane actually high catching on Captain America. Once again, he does have a bit of backup though, but will it be enough? Yuzuki is going to get the transfuse off Captain America. It's really low. Hemo Plague, just in case, is high. Comes in and picks up yet another kill. 7-2 and two right now on track to a repeat of his record. Walks into a bush. Yuzuki finds a wild Katarina ultimate. As they're going to get the shot point down. But Ken is going to... Ooh, the stun goes out on Katarina. Katarina is going to be at a lot more HP than W Pooper. There's All another stun, stun though. Ooh, oh. lightning rushes away. Is it going to be enough? No, no it is not. 20 HP taken down. Katarina, 25. is he going to be able to catch up right there? W Pooper with a little stun around. Step. Oh, turn around. oh, lightning rush for the kill. What a kill there by W Pooh Bear. Running away with 20 HP. Katarina was not able to click the Shunpo in time. Graze <laughs> ultimate over the wall. We'll wind up cleaning it up, though. That is a killing spree ended. And I don't know where Graze came from in that fight. Okay. Um... Uh, uh, Nubby Poover, just with his Q and that, that beautiful ward, was able to get that last little bit of poke in to finish Katarina. Uh, some unfortunate things for... <laughs> Let's see, that was awesome. For troopers in that match, look at bot lane. We have Orbit taking that power. Ezreal got a lot of CS. A lot of CS got denied to Graves. Looking at the CS difference, that is massive 60 CS difference in favor right now of Orbit Gaming in the bot lane. So, Nien is scary as hell. But <laughs> Katarina just finished her Gunblade. Katarina just got a lot stronger. Gunblade, I'd say, is one of the core items of Katarina, possibly Rylai's. Depends on your perspective, mm -hmm. depends on what you want to do. But it dramatically increases her damage. She benefits greatly from both stats. Judy Monica also hitting level 11. Right now, even though they're behind the gold, a lot of what they were going for, a lot of that, you know, Katarina possible cleanup, just started to happen. Mm -hmm. And of course, Brave's getting a kill. He's getting closer, man. He almost has a BT. Almost has that Thirster. He almost does. He actually did get a killing spree bonus gold from killing Nubby Pooh Bear and that awkward ultimate engagement that did go down over there by those brushes. But like you said, Gray is slowly clawing his way back in this one. Katarina, I don't know about you, when I have a champion that is all about throwing knives, why wouldn't I want to add a gun into the mix? Finally realizing that <laughs> they do have a pink ward over here, they are going to take down that enemy ward, so they're not going to know uh, denying any more vision over there by their own rates there. So, very smart play of killing the ward once you identify that it's there by uh, troopers troopers in this circumstance. Once again, the orbit has generated a little bit of breathing room for themselves. Almost a 3,000 gold advantage, 13 kills to 10. They have talked down that tower in the bottom lane, so that's giving them a little more presence. 
High Blitzcrank and Nine all just standing around right here. Want to go in on Trooper. Trooper's alone. Soraka's actually in the mid lane. There's a pull. There's a knockup. There's an Ezreal ultimate. That is going to take down Graze right there. So very nice job identifying the fact the support was away warding. And they will be walking out A-OK -okay from that one. Vladimir's getting low in the top lane. Just kind of farming up there by himself. No one's actually there. Nubby Pooh, oh, very dangerous. Oh, very dangerous. Is he actually going to get dredge line? Does not. Very nice job. Just juking that. Another tower is going to go down there. So actually Vladimir did kill Rumble in that one. Okay. So he actually died yeah. during the engagement in the bottom lane I was looking at. So, oh, Blitzcrank over the wall oh does not find a Soraka, barely missing that champion there. Vladimir continuing to split push and sustain himself back up here. There are four champions of Orbit Gaming in the bot lane that need to take the focus away from Troopers Troopers. So not the same exact kind of composition with Shen from last game, but still a little bit of a split push going on. This top tower could pot not potentially fall actually from this wave, but could be falling down next. That may be the next prime target here. Mid turret does have a lot of HP over here on Troopers on Troopers Troopers side. Does not actually for Orbit Gaming, so that might be a mid lane contestion. Could be the next point. Top lane actually both towers are at a severe severe damage as well. Ezreal kind of waiting in this bush right here. Does he think he'd take Trooper all by himself? Yes, he does. Misses all his skill shots though, but that doesn't matter. He's continuing the damage. Ultimate goes off. Now in bad spot. He has a blue buff and a red buff. He does not want to give this away to Trooper. Is going to continue to go down. Actually lands the skill shots. Oh. Lands an ultimate. He could Dodges play. a buckshot. Is he going to be able to get in here? Trooper's now running away using the bush for advantage. Nautilus is coming down. I don't know if Ezreal sees that. He's going to arcane shit out of there. Blitzcrank and Soraka will meet each other at this bush. Blitzcrank is going to try to run over here. Oh, there's a pull going down. Oh. On could that be a kill? Dodges the dredge line. Blitzcrank will pick up the kill, but Katarina here. Could she do cleanup duty? All she needs is the Shampoo to one target to pick up the kill. There's a flash. There's a bouncing blade. There's a uh, depth charge going off, too. Are they going to dive? Lemon Nation? No. They pick up the kill on Ezreal. Katarina gets double buff. She is content with that one right now. But mid lane, like I said, the next tower to go down here. Orbit Gaming split pushing all the way through. Very awkward engagement for Ezreal. Actually comes out ahead. Picks up a kill. He dies in the process. Donates double buff to Katarina. But his team picks up a tower and further pushing this gold advantage ahead. Now about a 6k gold advantage in total. 33,000 to 26.9k. 16 kills to 11. And Orb now looking back on the upswing after kind of letting it slip through their fingertips. They got a better grip on it now, Studia. I mean, right now, it all started with those two kills in the top lane the bot lane. Um, in the end, Intenso did die, but they still killed Trooper, and that right there is the person who needs CS right now. Katarina, she has her basic item. I mean, of course, Nautilus doesn't really need much, but overall, like, Graves is kind of weak right now versus that Ezreal who almost has a... Um, I don't know what he's building, actually, but he does have that Mom Mordius. <laughs> and another dragon should go to orbit right here. They could contest, but... <laughs> Ooh, I mean, they can't fight now. Tried to steal with that equalizer, but like you said, now they can't engage with the equalizer being used. They don't want to do that. Like I mentioned before on Champions League, Rumble's equalizer is the way to go in. Nautilus dredge line is the other way they have to initiate. Katarina does not want to initiate. She wants to be on cleanup duty. She wants to be like an Akali. She will not be there at the start of the fight, but all of a sudden, she will be picking up a quadra kill, maybe even a penta kill. That is what Katarina wants to do. So when you use one of those ultimates and use one of those methods of initiating, you cut your options to go in in half. And the one thing is, Nautilus cannot pull through a wall like Blitzcrank can. So his initiation is actually a little bit weaker than Blitzcrank's because of that. He does have a lot of supplemental crowd control in order to make him a little bit better than Blitzcrank in some situations. But when you're in a dragon pit and there's a big wall between you and the enemy team, that's not a way you can go in. I mean, right now, Baron is now a big scare. With Lee Sin, with Ezreal, especially with Head Essence Flux, they can murder Baron. Uh, mm -hmm. We do have... Troopers, troopers right now trying to like secure the area, but how do they do that? How do they stay safe from high with his oracle how do they stay from stay safe from lemonation on blitzcrank with that fist ready to grab them and just pummel them into the ground so they don't have a way to safely fight they don't have the cleanup potential right now from judy monica and katarina they are not in a way to fight and with their composition they don't really come back from behind they can make some cool catches totally but that is orbit's team orbit has Blitzcrank. Orbit has Lee Sin with his mass mobility. Orbit has the playmakers right there. I mean, we do have Nautilus. We do have you know possibilities, but that's just not what Trooper Troopers can do right now. They just cannot really make a big play. And oh god, Trooper getting hit by that Resonating Strike. And he's gonna actually flash Ooh. away. So that's a Summoner spell burn on top of this. And so now Graze is gonna be even weaker in a future engagement. He's not gonna have the escape method of his flash. If they dive onto him, that is almost going to be a dead Graze, and they're gonna have to reposition themselves for this one. They're constantly clearing out wards over here. Another ward being placed down over here. They are trying just to keep them busy by clearing out this vision, kind of scare them into the fact that hey, we know where you are, so we know when you're gonna go on to Baron, and we know when we could try to engage on you. Rumble over here split pushing. By himself, you know he has that uh, hex sec revolver. Has a Kage's lucky pick to try to help him catch up a little bit in gold right now. 
He's actually gonna walk into do it. the rest of the team. No, Captain America wanted to put down the ward. Is he gonna get out of there alive? What's up? Oh, puts down the equalizer. Stun from Kenna. The ultimate being used to take up a kill on Rumble. But Judy Monaco over the wall. The ultimate will pick up the kill on W Pooh Bear. That's really bad for Orb. Now Hyde's getting extremely low. Knocked up in DA with depth charge. Flashes over the wall, but a double kill for Katarina. That ultimate is basically gonna be back up. Vladimir will get a kill on Soraka though and everything. Now Nautilus will fall. Ezreal, so much damage on him right now. Rumble is so low. Judy Monica, the health is taken away slowly. Gray's a little more than half HP. Blitzcrank has the arm up now. Is he gonna go in? Who will he pull? Pulls no the minion one. instead. So no engagement there from Orbit Gaming. Ezreal in the meantime will pick up the kill on this tower. Rumble's gonna have to recall. Three members of Orbit are alive. Three members of Troopers Troopers are alive. Troopers Troopers are the weaker ones out of that engagement though. But I really don't think Troopers Troopers could have asked for anything more in that engagement. Rumble got caught awkwardly and the rest of it was just kind of arena that was the best thing they could have hoped for well i mean if someone else had walked into a bush that probably would have been the best thing <laughs> uh we did have captain america getting caught that that kind of sucked he escaped barely on the hair of his chinny chin chin because of that scrap shield getting out of there was almost enough to turn that fight but they just do not have anything to deal with the intenso right now if they blow katarina on that was the worst way that could have came out if they use katarina skills <laughs> on the intenso they could go ahead you know kill him maybe but he has arcane ship and with the ultimate down she just doesn't have the damage potential right now with gunblade down too which she used early on in the fight they don't have the potential to kill yen and that's who has to die that's the big scary guy right now for orbit they have ways to deal with katarina but those guys i mean it, it's very quick it's very instant you know a blitzcrank ultimate a cannon ultimate right away it happens but nintendo he's going to be the guy in the back constantly shooting constantly doing really high amounts of damage right now his CS is 184, he has a good amount of kills, actually has 9,000 gold at this point in the game, so he's one of the reasons that they're so far ahead. And looking at the rest of Troopers Troopers right now, they don't have anybody who can compare to that, except Katarina, 700 gold behind, but as we said before, she's not going to start anything. Uh, she wants to be the one to clean it up. She's not going to go in there and start engagement. They are just continuing to dance around this Baron buff. Everybody's saying, hey, look, we have Oracles too. They're going to clear out wards. Both teams doing a great job of denying vision upon one another. That was a big fault for Orb in game one, a big fault for Troopers Troopers in game two, and now both teams trying to establish as much as possible. Oracles Elixirs are being bought back and forth consistently and constantly. First tower of the game will go down for Troopers Troopers. It is this middle tower that was extremely low in the beginning stages of the game. So now four towers to one is the advantage for Orbit gaming although they are going to potentially force them out of this mid lane right here Ezreal coming up from the bot lane so there was actually a four versus five contestion going on by that tower so Troopers Troopers takes that advantage and decides to fall back a little bit but now is Orb going to go over here and try to clear out the wards by Baron it looks like there we go Blitzcrank trotting over pops the overdrive they're going to go on ward clearing duty you know Troopers Troopers ooh looks like Graze and Straka are going to recall at this point in time so if Orb makes a move by Baron there are going to be a couple members down at this point in time could be very very dangerous but Graze and Straka buying healing and immediately running straight towards that Baron buff. Straka actually taking the top lane route while his Graze going straight through the mid lane. Rumble once again wants to put a ward down here but he is going to find everybody. Dodges the hook but does not dodge the Lee Sin. Now going down on Nautilus as well. Nautilus has that Oracle's Lich so if he falls that is going to be devastating for Troopers Troopers uh, studio. They're potentially an engagement going down. Constant ward Maybe. going over the wall. Uh -huh. uh. So they don't want to make the mistake they did last time. They don't want another, oops, we chased him and died. So they're being super cautious again. I mean, Pooper way far in the back, actually, just to make sure he does not suicide chasing after Captain America again. So, I mean, right now, both teams, even though Orbit is so far ahead, they're playing cautiously. They don't want to give up anything because they know how quickly a game can snowball. Uh -huh. So I like the cautious play, but they really can make some silly plays. They can go a bit crazy. Not too crazy. Not, not, not be Pooper suicide crazy, but this is a good Baron. <laughs> Especially what? with Captain America in the bot lane. What is he doing there? I don't know. Nobby Pooper does have the Zanya's Hourglass, though, so he is going to be able to save himself just in case they get a little bit in over their heads. And if Nubby Pooper stays alive, unlike last fight, there's going to be feet. a lot of damage. Their ping's going down. Blitzcrank and uh, Vladimir, they're going to peel off. There's the actually peel off the Baron. They actually get this one. So the Kennen ultimate goes off. Vladimir ultimate goes off. Ezreal goes down. There are three ki two kills immediately there onto uh, Troopers Troopers. There's one more from Baron. Another one. Leeson picks up a kill on Nautilus. Baron buff in their hands. A three kill for none engagement now orbit gaming realizing how much stronger they are in this game 10,000 gold advantage 21 kills to 13 four towers to one gonna continue this advantage now that they know three members of troopers troopers are down Ezreal once again be in the tank is gonna go in and take tower shots first and actually he's gonna try to go out but he actually still taking tower shots right there they are eventually gonna go down and take this tower down pushing their advantage are they gonna continue with this are they gonna fall back Nubby Pooh Bear and High want to go in the rest of the team decides they should fall back and play it a little bit safer 
ping in the bush right here, say, hey, let's recall here, let's wait here, see what they're going to do for this one. Uh-oh, Captain America. Okay, good. You're walking the other way. You're not going to walk near that bush and die. So Orbit, very, very much so in the lead at this point, Studio. I mean, with that Baron buff right now going to Orbit, they have control of everything. So the wards might still be out there, but as long as they st stay grouped, as long as they don't go ahead and walk into a sudden bush, really just not even, like, unknowingly, they can be grouped. They can fight being caught off guard right now by troopers troopers so they just have to make sure they go ahead stay group they can go ahead kill all those outer turrets well actually just the last outer turret pressure the inner turrets if they get a good blitzcrank hook if they get a good even just ezreal or ezreal ultimate into a vibrant ultimate into a ken ultimate they can fight underneath the turret there isn't a lot of tank except on nautilus on the enemy team they really can just dominate this fight right now and that, that is scary so ten thousand gold lead they're in a position really just to kind of win right now Yes, indeed. Kenan picking up his blue buff for his cooldowns. Double will the Ancients is up. Vladimir on top of this has a spirit visage. Vladimir is not going to die in fights. He's going to sustain himself as best as he can in this game right now. Has a blue pot to pop if a team fight and starts engaging. He has that death cap as well. Dragon goes down, so now they have even more global gold, continuing to push their advantage, deny resources to the enemy teams to prevent a comeback, even if they do wind up getting into a bad team engagement right here. So they have denied a bunch of buffs, they've denied Dragon, they of course have the Baron, ooh, almost getting the engagement down that they wanted onto Katarina, Pole actually barely missing as well. Continuing to pressure this middle lane, the rest of Troopers Troopers having to play so defensively, so cautiously, being put into their base. They are turtle mode heavy right now. It's like they're playing Terran in StarCraft 2. Whereas Orb right now, the Zerg swarm on the outside of the base. They are being so aggressive, being so patient, waiting for these minions. They're going to try to poke, try to prod, try to get that Blitzcrank pull that unfortunately hits a minion. They are going to try to either bait an engagement from Troopers Troopers or grab one with that Blitzcrank hook like you talked about. They get the good engagement. It's team fight central. If not, they're just going to continue to camp out here with the Baron buff still up. It's about three quarters done right now. So they are just going to be able to continue to poke and prod, push down this tower. If this tower falls, Troopers Troopers is forced with do we go in and try to go for a fight? Or do we decide to just peel back and let them take the inhibitor? As they'll use his ultimate to farm minions down there while they wait. Here we go. Blitzcrank pull over the wall. Finds Captain America. Flash over the wall. Will go down. Equalizer goes, but Nubby Pooh Bear is going to tag him for damage. Lee went over the wall onto Katarina. Yuzuki's going to take down Soraka. Graves will take down Kennen. But Vladimir takes down Soraka. There's going to be a kill there. Lee going on to Katarina. That is not going to be enough. Ezreal will take down Nautilus. Blitzcrank takes down Graves. Asu is called. That is a tower down. That is an inhibitor down. That is potentially Game Studio Orb coming back. Back, taking an impressive game two, showing they've learned from their mistakes in game one. 26 kills to 14, 53.7k gold to 39.7k gold, six now, seven towers. They are going to take game three against Super Troopers in a very, very awesome series, Studio. GGWP, the Katarina pick in the end it did not work out, not because of Katarina herself, but just overall Troopers Troopers. They played decently. They still have a lot to learn, though. And Orbit Gaming, with the way they've been playing just in the past few weeks, killing nerds left and right, you know, taking out TSM, taking out MTW North America, no surprise in the end that Troopers really lost this series at the end. But, I mean, think about it. Troopers, they did so well. That second game, they had a decent hold early. The first game, they, they destroyed Orbit. I I'm loving their play. I want to see more of them. I want to see Troopers Troopers march into action a few more times. But really, with that good Blitzcrank grab, with that just good play, from all of Orbit right now. I, I don't know if they can be stopped. It was such a good series. We thought Orbit might have lost a little bit of their shine to the relatively unknown Troopers Troopers team. Game 1, Troopers Troopers ran a tr like basically ran session on Orbit and was like, this is how you play League of Legends. Orbit Gaming, however, the ever-studious group of people that they are, read up on what Troopers Troopers was doing, said, all right, I see your play style, and turned it back on top of them in game number two. Game number three, both teams came out of the gate swinging. There were six kills before four minutes in that game, Studio. It was aggressive Damn. through and through. 26 kills for one team, 14 for another. That is a half-hour-long game. That is extreme aggression. Orbit Gaming adjusted their play style to deal with Troopers Troopers, continuously picking unorthodox champions, going once again for the Star Call Heavy Soraka build with a rumble in the top lane, Katarina in the mid lane. They tried to make something happen. It was there. They just unfortunately, kept, like you said before, in game number two, the way they were playing, they wanted to be aggressive, they wanted to play like they were ahead, and even when they were, it was never as much as it was in game number one, so unfortunately, Orb was able to bounce back, and unfortunately for Troopers Troopers, they get knocked down into the loser's bracket, so we're not done seeing them yet, 
orb will actually continue into the winner's bracket with this one. So I'm actually going to pull up the brackets for you, ladies and gentlemen, at home. We are right here. Troopers and Troopers losing out 2-1. to one. Wow, they updated it already. That was quick. 2-1 to one to Orb Gaming. So Orb is going to advance to the next round to take down MTWNA as they did take a 2-0 series over 4 Not Fire. We are going to be seeing tomorrow CLG Black play against Legion, and then immediately after that, the winner of that match will take on Team Dynamic in another series right here. TSM Evo and Curse are going to be going at it in the last bracket over here. Meanwhile, 4 Not Fire, Troopers Troopers is going to be battling out for their lives in the losers bracket. Once again, this is for the IPL Faceoff San Francisco Showdown Qualifier, or as Baron has aptly named it, the Disco in the Frisco. Take it as you will, ladies and gentlemen. I like the name. So there's a devil elimination right here. The top four teams are going to be going on into the actual uh, face-off tournament, and they are going to be t battling out for other things such as supplemental prizes. And, of course, like you mentioned before, travel to the actual tournament. So they have a lot to be fighting for right now. As you said, Orbit Gaming was saying they did not want to lose this one, and their determination really shown through studios. They took a very impressive 2-1 to -one series against a very tough Troopers Troopers team. And, okay, I don't like saying this. I do not like saying MVPs because overall it is a team effort. And Orbit, okay, I mean, MVT, most valuable team, definitely goes to Orbit because they won. But, hi, these past couple games, oh my god, he's been so good. On Lee Sin, both of them just being a major terror. I can see why uh, Lee Sin was banned out originally in the beginning of the series. But, well, actually, no, it was banned out by Orbit. All right, just give hi, keep giving hi, Lee Sin. It keeps working, apparently. <laughs> but, my god, all right. So before we go ahead, let you guys go ahead, go back to your non-streams. I don't even know what you do right now. I just play video games and sleep. Weird. <laughs> um, all right, Optimus Tom, I want to follow you on Twitter. How do I do it? Oh, well, you can log on to Twitter.com and find me at Optimus Tom. In addition to this studio, I want to follow you on Twitter. Where can I find you? All right, League of Studio. Go ahead, follow me on Twitter. And, yeah, that's about it for tonight, guys. I am ready to go ahead, chillax, drink some water, and, I don't know, play some League. I'm pretty much going to do the same exact thing for you. Don't forget, guys, this has been the IPL, the IGN Pro League. Follow them on Twitter at IGN Pro League if you don't already. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the San Francisco Face-Off Challenger qualifications. Anything else, you could throw words in there for that. We'll be back tomorrow evening. Like I said, CLG Black against Legion will be kicking it off. Immediately after that, the winner will be taking on, I believe it was, Team Dynamic. Yes, it is. So Team Dynamic against the winner of CLG Black and Legion. I believe we're going to kick that off at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 5 o'clock on the East Coast over here, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to have a long night of League of Legends content for you, ladies and gentlemen. So once again, keep your dials locked here tomorrow evening for the IPL San Francisco Face-Off Challenge Qualifiers Disco in the Frisco, whatever you want. I'm going to stop talking right now and get some water. See you guys later. All right, night, folks.